guys, I am out here with Jurate Kumpiene. Kumpiene, professor of waste management. Waste science and technology. Waste science and technology at the Luleå Technical University or Luleå University of Technology. That's right. How did you end up in science? I was always interested in learning. So school was easy for me. I thought it was fun to go to school and learn new stuff, but I never thought that I would be the one who also creates a new, new, new knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't sure what I wanted to study. Many things were sounded interesting to me. Yeah. So I decided to go towards this deductive method. Yeah. I first identify what I didn't want to do. <laughs> yes. And finally I end up in environmental studies yeah. and um, I don't regret at all. Yeah. I think this is something that is relevant anytime and it will be always interesting to and giving to the society yeah. to, to work and to study. And so I'm really happy I chose that subject. And I think it shows that at the moment the environment and its protection is more relevant as ever. I mean, why do we need to clean the water and the earth? Where is this coming from? Well, if you look at the um, metals, yeah. they are basic components of the earth crust. Yeah. So we are not creating them, we are only taking them, removing from one place, the, let's say ore, yeah. and uh, refining them, extracting metals and making products, yeah. and then using them in society. And during all these processes we generate waste. Yeah. So we spill a little bit here and there, and so we redistribute those elements from yeah. the high enrichment places to the low enrichment places. And when we do that, so environment is not adapted to uh, increase concentrations of those elements in the environments where we're using. And so we can get exposed to elevated concentrations of those elements, which can eventually cause toxic effects to our yeah. health and also to the environment. So we will always, if we are as a species to move forward, we will always have waste. Yes will always have waste and to my mind uh, this zero waste concept is basically impossible because even if we recycle materials and uh, if we re reuse them there will always be a, some part that is not possible anymore to recycle or to reuse yeah so that part has to be removed from the society and uh, that's what we actually are doing we can recycle materials and reuse the soil that we have contaminated but we first need to remove those contaminating substances from from those materials or the soil to be yeah. able to use them further otherwise we will just keep on accumulating toxics yeah. and toxic compounds in the society until we get really sick yeah so we need to find a ways how to remove them and make this circulation of the materials safe and possible yeah so that we will always have a need for landfills yeah as a final safe storage until we find the ways of or use for those materials that yeah. are laying there so therefore this zero waste is basically <laughs> is not really possible but minimal waste minimal waste yeah and i think that's a much better word yeah. can you tell me about your research um, I have started with soil science, so yeah. I was looking at first degradation of soils due to, let's say, its intensive use in agriculture, yeah. and later I went to uh, contaminated soils. The, what we are doing is that we're trying to find a ways how to uh, reduce the risks with those soils, because not always it's possible to degrade organics yeah. or uh, remove metals sometimes the better way is to try to kind of neutralize those chemicals to make detoxify them yeah <laughs> uh, and it can be done let's say if it is a metal yeah 
or uh, semi-metal like mm. arsenic that yeah. I've been yes. re doing research quite a lot about. Uh, then if we have an ore, yeah. so the metal is bound very strongly to its initial mineral, but when we are extracting uh, yeah. useful components, arsenic usually is left as a waste. Mm -hmm. It had its use much more before than now, but since uh, we detected that it has a toxic uh, properties for yeah. and uh, cancer cancerogenic for people, yeah. its use has been more or less uh, restricted. Mm -hmm. So we don't need that much of arsenic anymore. So it's, it becomes like a um, side component of, yeah, of that the we want to take exactly. away. And uh, during all these processes, some of the arsenic is released into the environment or and sometimes it's not possible simply to excavate all this soil and send somewhere. So we need them to build a landfill just for contaminated soil. And maybe there are other ways to deal with it in the place where it is already there. So what we are trying to do, uh, we're trying to convert it into less yeah. mobile and less toxic form. So it doesn't enter the biological cycle. So mm -hmm. as long as these metals are strongly bound in the soil and not available, as we call it, to biological yeah. So it doesn't uh, grow into our salad. Exactly. Yeah. So they are not bioavailable. Mm -hmm. So then the risk for getting poisoned or getting yeah. intoxicated or, or in other way to get affected uh, is minimal. So that's what we're trying to do. Instead of excavating the contaminated soil and transporting it to somewhere uh, newly built yeah. landfill in clean environment, we're trying to uh, change. Clean it on yeah, on and the spot. Yes, exactly. But it's not clean up. It's no. more managing risks, yeah. reducing bioavailability and reducing the risks to environment. So, but this sounds like it's, I mean, it sounds like it's really valuable to, to society. Is that what sort of makes you do this? This feeling of contributing with something that is making society a little better? Absolutely. So seeing the, uh, research results to be applied in real life that's really rewarding yeah and that's basically the biggest motivation to do something that is relevant yeah not only for kind of owned curiosity because that can be also motivating just to know how things work and and we have done a lot of stuff in the lab just driven by that but if we can succeed with something and give it to society to industry to cope with those problems that yeah. they have at the moment then it's the, the most rewarding part yeah so is that sort of what that is your inspiration yes i could say that yeah it's my kind of reward for for what i do inspiration i i probably find in as probably as you mentioned yourself at the beginning that talking to other scientists or more reading yeah. about their research yeah. i find a lot of inspiration there how about frustration do you sometimes feel that that you can be frustrated over a problem and then you want to solve it yes frustration comes from that Sometimes I get an idea and I feel, just <laughs> simply feel that it should work. <laughs> and if it doesn't, then uh, uh, then this feeling is also kind of, it's not just that I wake up in the morning and I feel that I will do that. Uh, it's of course, I mean, it's the basics for that <laughs> feeling is the knowledge <laughs> that the more you read the more you you know about the, the area and then this feeling or can we can call it the intuition or something yeah. that you that it should work and sometimes it does but not always yeah or, or not always as we expected no so but um, I think that research wise this uh, frustration is not that serious compared to frustrations over not being able to do what you want uh, due way? to let's say financial restraints or yeah or finding um, 
raising funds for your own research. I think that part is much more frustrating for me. Yeah. Because science is always ups and downs and it's normal that you cannot always succeed. We do 10 experiments and if we succeed with one, it's already achievement. Yes. But being able to dedicate that time to do all those 10 experiments, yeah. that's what is, is most frustrating. What frustrates me a little bit is that we focus very much on one issue, which is the climate change. Yeah. And everything is kind of narrowed down to one single factor is carbon dioxide yeah. emissions. Yeah. And even if we get grip on that and get control over it, these processes, mm. there is another part of the, our work. What we do, we create enormous amount of chemical substances. Yeah. There are about 50 million substances that we have been using and and have used yeah. over the entire world yeah and i think that is a very huge threat to the society yeah it has a serious consequences on our health on our life yeah. quality and the environment and these substances are created in such a huge amount and so fast that we are not keeping up with understanding what kind of impact they actually have yeah. Uh, on the surrounding mm. and to ban one substance it takes decades yeah while during that time there are hundreds of thousand new substances are created yeah so it's kind of a battle that we are not even start taking basically no. <laughs> so we haven't started fighting the fight yet there are on only few substances that have been banned uh, yeah. for example in 70s that is DDT or now we are talking about this perfluor yeah uh, perfluorinated compounds yeah uh, but they are already in nature they are already everywhere yeah they are even in the blood of every person that was tested for the substance Why? we have it in our blood already we are because bathing in chemicals that we don't know what do yeah and I think that is a very serious threat to the society yeah so which is not very in focus at the moment. No, it's because slightly overlooked. Yes, yeah. and we get exposed mainly through water. So yeah. everything what gets into the water gets into our bodies. That's it's a little scary. So so that's sort of our fear or your fear. What about the hope for for your field? Um, the hope. Uh, I think this. The movement, as we say now, the circular economy yeah. movement. Uh, I think the intention is very good. Yeah. But we also, as I mentioned before, have to remember that we cannot blindly just jump into one area and say everything now is circular. Yeah. So we have to always keep a, in memory that, yeah. or in mind, there are issues in each area that we're working in. Yeah. Every time we try to create something good, even with the same mentioned chemicals, they yeah. were created to make our life easier. Yeah. But then there was another side of the coin. Yeah. So and the same now with yeah. the circular economy. We understand when we need to recycle, reuse as much of the our resources that we already have, yeah. but have do it with mm. with knowledge. Yeah. And that's where uh, I have a hope. The area of waste science and technology is really truly multidisciplinary and also it's not only about natural sciences it's behavior yeah human behavior it's uh, also the waste it's not really material it's the decision yeah. that you make you want to throw something out you make a decision now it's waste yeah. but yesterday it was perfectly normally functioning material probably or the product so, so it's human behavior it comes in in more and more and we understand that now that you cannot solve all the problems just having technical solutions in that case thank you for coming out i enjoyed it a lot you're welcome bye guys bye bye